Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here. I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about 210.5 identification for branch circuits based on the 2020 edition of the NEC. This will be based on the 2020, but there weren't any real substantial changes uh, in the 2020 edition. There was one subtle change and we'll talk about it, but for the most part, uh, this section has been relatively unchanged since about 2005-2008, so it's been around for a while. If you're not familiar with me, my name's Ryan Jackson. This is the kind of thing I do for a living. I teach seminars and write textbooks and make videos on YouTube and Facebook and do expert witness testimony and electrical consulting. I'm just kind of a, an electrical code geek, to be honest. That's what I do, and I'm proud to say it. If you think I can help you out with a question, don't hesitate to ask me. RyanJackson618 at gmail.com is my email address. If you have a question, I will absolutely do my best to help you out. Let's go ahead and get started. 210.5a talks about the grounded or neutral conductor, and this is a pretty simple requirement. Grounded or neutral conductors must be identified as required in 200.6. Okay, so that means we're going to use a white or a gray conductor for the most part. That's what we're going to do for our grounded or neutral conductor. We could also use a conductor that's not green that has three uh, gray or white stripes along its entire length, right? So that's like, you know, 500 feet of stripe on the conductor at three locations. That doesn't mean three marks of face tape. Uh, I could also, for larger conductors, I could re-identify the conductors white or gray at the termination. So maybe I've got 500 Casey mil, and it's any color but green. I could take that wire and wrap one piece of white or gray tape around it, and I would comply with the code. I don't need to wrap it three times. Uh, personally, I think more than just one little tiny wrap probably should be done. I'm not saying you need to wrap the whole thing or do the candy cane look for its entire length, but the code simply says, a little bit of tape and you're good to go. So grounded and neutral conductors are pretty easy and the equipment grounding conductors are as well. 250.119 is the section that says equipment grounding conductors are going to be green or they're going to be green with a yellow stripe or they're going to be bare. And then for larger conductors just like the neutral we can take a, a conductor and wrap it with a piece of green tape and call it good. So A and B are simple, the neutral and the equipment ground. White or gray, green, good to go. Where it gets a little bit trickier here is 210.5C, identification of ungrounded conductors. Ungrounded conductors must be identified in accordance with C1, my boy Tesla, for AC systems, or C2, my boy Edison, for DC systems. Now, we're just going to focus on AC systems today. I hope you don't mind. 210.5C1, branch circuits, and here's what's important, from more than one nominal voltage system. That's the key. If the wiring system contains more than one voltage system, okay, let's push pause here. If you don't have a transformer in your building, then you can pretty much just push stop on this video and go your merry way. You can close your code book, this rule doesn't apply to you, right? You have to have more than one voltage system. Now, you could get more than one voltage system from a generator. You got 12208 for the building and you got a 480 volt generator. It'd be pretty weird, but you know, you could do that. So I wanna make sure that it's not just if we have a transformer, but you know, in the real world, you're probably not gonna have multiple voltage systems if you don't have a transformer. So let's read it again. If the wiring system contains more than one voltage system, then ungrounded conductors has to be identified by phase or line and system voltage class. Let's talk about phase or line really quick. If I have a three phase system, then I have three phases and you identify them by phase. Nice. If I have a single phase system, then you don't identify them by phase because you only have one phase. How many phases are there in single phase? One. It has two lines, line one and line two, so you would probably identify them as black and red, for example, for line one and line two. So if I have more than one voltage system, we're going to identify them by phase or line and system voltage class. And you can see by the yellow underline text that that was a change made in the 2020 code. And this is a tricky one. If you go back to Article 100 uh, and you go into voltage commonal <laughs> commonal, voltage comma nominal, you'll see that the nominal voltage 
is a generic way of ascribing a system voltage class to conductors. So if I measure a uh, voltage and it's 119 slash 238, it's probably still 120, 240 nominal. So we're doing it by system voltage class. So here's the key, and this, was, this is something that I've been fighting for 15 years. Let's say I have a building that has a 480 volt service. It's 10 stories. On every floor, I have a transformer to take it down to 208. How many systems do I have? I have 11 voltage systems. One that's 480, and then 10 separate voltage systems. But I only have two voltage classes. Does that make sense? I have the 277 480 voltage class and the 120 208 voltage class. So all of my 120 208 systems, I'm going to identify the same way. And I'm going to identify my 277 480 in some prescribed manner. Let's go a little bit further here. It's really important that you recognize this fact. The code does not tell you how to do this. It doesn't say use black, red, blue for 12208 and brown, orange, yellow for 277480. It does not say that it never has and it probably never will. So what voltage are we looking here that looking at here in the photograph? I don't know and neither do you. The voltage of this system is whatever your meter says it is. And that's so important to me that you understand that. Please, please, please don't make any assumptions about what the voltage is. That's where people get injured. This could be, this could be 347, 600 for all we know. We, we don't know because we didn't install it and we didn't put a meter on it. Now, if you only have one voltage system, all you have is 12208 then you need to pick either white or gray for your neutrals and, and you can use white and gray and you're going to use green for your equipment ground or bare or green with the yellow stripe and then you can do whatever you want after that if you only have one voltage system you could go black 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 red 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 it, it doesn't matter or you could go black red blue brown orange yellow all in one it doesn't matter we don't care about coloring systems if you only have one voltage system in the building. It doesn't matter. We care about the neutral. We care about the equipment ground. Here's an example. My friend Joe sent me this picture, and I think he's kind of joking around, but he makes a great point. Here we're installing this receptacle, and as you can see, he's using brown and gray for a 120-volt receptacle. Is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely that's okay. Now, what if he had 12208? and 277480 in that building. Could he still use brown and gray for 120? Yes. He could use black, red, blue, white for his 277480 and brown, orange, yellow or brown, purple, yellow or whatever he wants for his 12208. Now, I don't encourage that. I don't think that's a cool thing to do. I think I think a, a conscientious and a responsible electrician should do whatever the norm is in his or her area. In my area, black, red, blue, white for 12208. Brown, orange, yellow, gray for 277480. That's the norm in my area, and that's what I would choose to install. But the code doesn't say that, OK? The only colors that we really care about, besides white, gray, and green, is we do talk about orange if we have a high leg system. And that's in 110.15. If we have a high leg then it has to be orange or other effective means. Not even necessarily orange. It could be red if the AHJ determines that that's other effective means. So even with a high leg, it's a little bit more convoluted than you might expect. And, and this is where I reiterate, use your meter. The voltage is whatever your meter says. All right? So let's get back to the Copic. One more time. If the wiring system contains more than one voltage system, the ungrounded conductors must be identified by phase or line and system voltage class. And this applies at all termination, connection, and splice points. All right, way back in the day, it used to say that this applied wherever the conductor was accessible. And that meant that you would have to somehow like phase tape inside of an LB, a conduit body. And, and that's ridiculous. I mean, number one, it, it's incredibly difficult to do. And number two, who does it benefit? You know, you're not going to go in there and, and try to make a splice or something. So it applies at all termination, connection, and splice points. So in this photograph, in my panel, I have terminations. In my transformer, I have terminations, right? So it would apply in all of those. Now, 
this was also changed in the 2020 code. If multiple systems of the same system voltage class exist, the same method of identification can be used for all of them. Okay, so let's take a look here. On the far left, I have on backup power, I, I teach at this facility every year, these uh, panels with a red label are supplied from a backup system. The panel here on the red or on the black is supplied ultimately from the utility, not directly. They, they buy power at 138,000 volts at this place. It's a really cool facility. But what we're saying is this. I actually have three different systems in this photograph. I've got 277 480 and we're using brown, orange, yellow, gray. And then I've got 12208 and 12208 from two different systems. But they're the same voltage class, so go ahead and use the same coloring system. That was a change again made in the 2020. Just to make it clear, go ahead and use the same thing if the voltage is the same. Now, identification can be by color coding, taping, tagging, or similar methods. Certainly the easiest way to do this is by color coding whenever possible. So, you know, use black, red, blue, white, and green, and you're good to go. What a gorgeous junction box. I think my friend Joshua in North Carolina sent me this picture, and kudos to you, Joshua. Fantastic looking work. So, come up with a coloring system, but here's the key. And I used to write this up on almost every commercial building that I did if they had a transformer. Here's the key. Once you choose that method, the identification method must be posted at every panel board or similar piece of equipment, or it has to be documented in a way that's readily available. If I have a transformer in my building, I should, be able, I should be able to walk up to any transformer or any panel board in the building and see a sticker like this. Color code for 208120 is black, red, blue, white, green. Beautiful. That is a requirement, and it's been required for over 15 years. So if you're not doing this, you need to start doing it because it is definitely a requirement. Now, the marking must not be handwritten and it has to withstand the environment in which it is installed. You know, like this warning arc flash with my Sharpie. Yeah, probably not the best approach. Same thing with this requirement. I can't just write, you know, black, red, blue, white, you know. It's got to be a proper sticker, plaque, something like that. Now, if I go back, I should emphasize this. It can be documented in a way that's readily available. So it doesn't necessarily have to be posted at the panel board. Um, at, at some of the really big industrial sites where I teach, uh, they, they have like employee manuals that are just for their electricians. And, and they, could, uh, they could indicate in the employee manuals, hey, here at, at Bob and Joe's manufacturing facility, we're going to use brown, purple, and blue. And then we're going to use orange and, you know, they could do it that way. That would be documented in a way that's readily available. But I think in the real world, get yourself a sticker, stick it on your panel, you're good to go. There is an exception when a new system is added to an existing installation. The new system must be marked other unidentified systems exist on the premises. So you don't have to go back through and start putting stickers on every panel in the building you're just going to put a sticker on the system that you install so that you can let everybody know that, listen, we're using brown, orange, yellow, gray, but there could be, in the existing situation, there could be other brown, orange, and yellow, gray conductors that didn't come from this panel and are not even 277, 480. So this is what we're using, but this isn't the only place that it could come from. So we're just kind of doing that for a, for a safety feature. So with that said, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.